I often say to my shareholders, our most important stakeholder is our host country. And, uh, and why? Because if you can't get your mining business running, no one benefits. And then, and then of course, shareholders are critical because they put up the risk finance. After that is the communities and the business people in those host countries. And so, and, and, and for us to really unlock the value of countries and their economies, we need to access not only the natural resources like we see in Arabian Shield and Saudi Arabia, but also the human capital. And for me, it's super exciting to see what's happening in Saudi Arabia with their 2030 vision. The encouragement of really making a difference and driving transition because I don't believe we're going to solve the world's problems with a switch or one single piece of a technology like a battery. We've got to invest in the upliftment of societies that have been left behind and, and really embrace the whole world, which recently we have spent a lot of time deglobalizing rather than globalizing. And so, and I think the Future Minerals Forum is a fresh way to look at challenging everyone about the future rather than just creating another, another compliance dictated by the developed world. So I think the important thing in any investment, whether it's mining or other, is stability and a clear set of rules. It's like, you know, watching the World Cup Cup soccer after over the last while. You know, you can't play that tournament without a set of clear rules that don't change from one game to the other. And so that's an important component of the Future Minerals Forum as well, is put that on the table and debate what is really required to attract investment. And then one thing that I said uh, that I keep saying is also the, the developed world, you know, encourages investment in their own countries. And, and many of the funds who invest in mining want us to be able to, to only invest in safe places. But how do we in, incentivize capital to migrate to the developing world? So it's really a partnership between the emerging market or developing country global capital and the mining industry itself. And that's really that partnership. We needed to do work on getting it right. I think the, the capital markets need to reconsider how they allocate capital. And of course, the receptor, the developing market or developing country has work to do to, to ensure that that capital feels safe in, in their country. So I think Saudi can make a, a, a huge contribution in, in many ways and, and already has by, by challenging the, 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 the world with its future mining forum rather than trying to encourage another set of regulations. And, and so itself it has endowment as we know in Saudi Arabia that can unlock and and they're already with their new mining laws and they've, their real commitment and, and genuine embracement of partnerships and, and foreign investment into their country. The, 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 they've always been a leader in the hydrocarbon industry. They continue to be that and, and are using that natural resource to energize, literally, the, the transition is, is critical. At the same time, you know, there's lots of barriers or perceived barriers by the Western investors around the Middle East. And particularly that whole region from the Middle East all the way down into South Asia. And Saudi Arabia has enormous influence in many of those countries. And again, you know, it, it, as, it, as, as it presents itself and the, the, the Future Mineral Forum, that's a gateway that hopefully will build those partnerships out and, and, and give a, a more sort of 
comfortable feeling to investors wanting to get in those markets. And we've also got to understand that, you know, the tr if you talk about copper, which is for me, one of the most strategic metals around. You know, traditionally that copper production has come from the western seaboard of South America along the Andes. But that's running out. And again, you know, become very geopolitically quite complex. An alternative to that is the famous Tethian metalliferous belt that extends from the Eastern Europe all the way down into Southern Asia. And then you can, with some imagination, extend that through Philippines, Indonesia, into Papua New Guinea. And that really is the future of many metals mining if we are going to deliver something for future generations. And again, I would caution, it's not all about battery technology. You know, it's, it's about transition. It's about transitioning to a cleaner world, of course, and more importantly, you know, just that on its own won't create a better place and, and a more sustainable world for future generations to enjoy. We need to go, reach further than that, as was an emerging topic in the recent COP27 deliberations, and that is how do we un uplift the undeveloped communities and, and countries on this planet. And, and again, that, like the, the clean energy transition, requires metals, requires mining. So this is much, in my mind, the, the Future Minerals Forum has a much longer horizon than just battery metals. And that is, how do we build a planet and develop the infrastructure for people so that it is more able to sustain a, the burgeoning population on its surface. Capital, as I said earlier, really looks for safe havens, safe homes, places that are stable, don't change. And I think Saudi Arabia has demonstrated that it can do that. And the point about value chains, when you break that train chain, it's catastrophic. And I think again, em embracing business people and encouraging that public-private partnership to build stronger value chains is really a, an objective that should be part of this Future Minerals Forum. Well, I believe that the, the vision that we've seen out of Saudi, the 2030 vision, has real, brings real gravitas to, to, to building some of these chains out, which will benefit future generations.